Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plante part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. This yet another classification system came up and that was known as the phylogenetic classification system. So let us see what was this system of classification. So definitely this system was to um, ensure even better mode of classification so that it can overshadow the limitation of the natural classification system. So let us first try to understand the term phylogenetic. So let us try to understand the meaning of the term phylogenetic. Let us look at this term phylo. Phylo means a specific race or tribe. This word phylo means a specific race or tribe. It, you can relate it to the term phylum. Genetic, what is genetic? It is something which is related to inheriting something. So basically it talks about origin. So phylogenetic classification system. What do you think is going to be this phylogenetic system? Basically phylogeny is the evolutionary history of taxonomic groups. So when we talk about how, when I say evolutionary history, I mean when we talk about the origin of different organisms. So that actually helps us to classify different organisms. So the basis of classification here is evolutionary relationships between organisms. We have already studied about evolution, right, in class 10th. So what is evolution? Evolution talks about the origin of different organisms and how do we uh, conclude the evolutionary relationship between organisms by looking at the similarities and dissimilarities between different organisms. We can conclude their evolutionary relationship and this evolutionary relationship is the basis of phylogenetic classification system. So similar and dissimilar features of an organism play a very important role in this classification system. Now as per this uh, system, organisms with more similar characters share common ancestor. As you can think of the example that you and your sibling, maybe you and your brother or sister, you look very similar. Why do you look similar? Because you share a common ancestor, both of you have shared the same parents. But when you compare yourself with your cousin, brother or sister, the similarities decrease. That's because both of you are less closely related. Again, when you compare yourself with a third cousin or a fourth cousin, so the similarity keeps on decreasing. So the more the similarities, the more closely you are related and you share a common ancestor. So this system of classification is based on the fossil records. So using the fossil records which appear with time, they actually conclude the similarities and the dissimilarities between organisms because the fossil records actually tell you about the different organisms which are existing on the earth. But now there was an issue with this fossil records. Now with time, new fossil records appear. So now when new fossil records appear, so whatever you concluded from the previous record, that gets changed. So that gets modified. So there was a problem due to this. Now, moreover, in, when we talk about biology, we have both animals and the plants. So we have the zoologist and we also have the botanists. So it was seen that the zoologists rely on the structural aspects to relate to the evolutionary aspects. That is, people who study the structure of animals, they say that looking at this structural aspect, we can actually talk about their evolution. We can actually say which organism evolved from which one. But on the other hand, the botanists, those who study plants, they do not agree to this. They do not say that we cannot uh, reach to the origin of plants just by looking at their structures. So they need some other things as well. So that is why due to this issue with the fossil records, that is why they took help of many other branch of science to derive the evolutionary relationship between organisms. So this classification system depends on information from cytotaxonomy, chemotaxonomy and numerical taxonomy. So these are three different branches of taxonomy which actually helps in gathering or providing more and more information for phylogenetic classification because fossil alone is not a very 
foolproof source of information for this type of classification. Now, we will talk about each of these taxonomy in detail now that what is cyto cytotaxonomy, what is chemotaxonomy and what is numerical taxonomy and how each of them help in phylogenetic classification. Let us talk about the advantages of this classification system. It tells about the evolutionary history of animals because here everything is based on the evolutionary history. So we will talk about the origin of different organisms. Talking about its limitations, closely related organisms can also differ in some important properties. So now even after this phylogenetic classification, we see that there might be some organisms, but they will be very few. There might be some exceptional organisms which might differ in one or two properties. But this limitation was not as severe as the natural classification system. So phylogenetic classification system turned out to be the best classification system so far. And that is what we have been following even now. So now we will see how cytotaxonomy, chemotaxonomy and numerical taxonomy play a role in phylogenetic classification system. So we will see sources which help in classification. Numerical taxonomy, cytotaxonomy and chemotaxonomy. So let us talk about each of them quickly. So first let us talk about numerical taxonomy. The term numerical itself says that it has something to do with numbers. So, what is it? It is a mathematical method of classification based on observable characteristics. So, it is basically a statistical method. So, you maintain a statistics for everything. So, whenever we, I talk about the characteristics, what do we actually look for evolutionary study? For, or to study the evolutionary history of organisms? We look for their similarities and dissimilarities. How do we understand similarities or dissimilarities between organisms by observing their characteristics. So in this type of taxonomy, what do they do? They compare, they give a number, a number is assigned to each observable characteristic of an organism. So everything will have a number and then you will actually start matching those numbers between different organisms. So using that mathematical method, you will actually get a value which will say how many numbers matched for these two organisms. Again, how many numbers matched for these two organisms. So with that calculation, you will get to know which two organisms have more similarities, which two organisms have lesser similarities. So here numbers are assigned to each character. So it this, uh, uh, this taxonomy basically uses mathematical methods to evaluate differences and similarities between the taxonomic groups. So here you can compare a large number of observable characteristics and they are all given equal weightage. I mean all observable characteristics, be it color, be it height, be it uh, the behavior, habitat, nutrition, every characteristic will be given the similar weightage. They will be assigned one number and then with the help of calculation we will actually get to know how many similarities and how many differences. So let us take one example. So here you can see four different types of organisms. The first one is a hydra, then we have a sea animal, then we have a human being and then we have a dog. So this is a hydra, this is a sea animal, this is human being and this is a dog. So these are four different organisms. Now if I tell you if we start using numerical taxonomy, what will start happening? We will see that if you look at their habitat, I mean even though structure-wise hydra and sea animal, they are different. I mean structure-wise all of them look very different from each other. But in numerical taxonomy for each and everything we will assign some numbers. For example, if you consider hydra, for hydra they, their habitat, so that habitat will be assigned one number. Their body structure, maybe they have radial symmetry, so they will be assigned one structure. They are invertebrates, they do not have a vertebral crawler. So for that one number will be assigned. So their nutrition and all other things. So everything will be given one number. Similarly for sea animal, human and dog. And then we will start matching those numbers. So in this case, what we will see? We will see there are more similarities between a hydra 
and a sea animal than between a hydra and human being or a hydra and a dog because both of these are invertebrates these two are invertebrates that is one similarity between these two both of them have radial symmetry so that is again another similarity both of them have marine habitats so again another similarity so we say can say that both of these can fall into the same group because they share more similar characteristics whereas we can say that both these organisms can fall on the same group because both of them are vertebrates both of them are mammals and so on so based on such things based on uh, the similarities and differences we can actually group them or we can actually classify organisms so this is numerical taxonomy next is cyto taxonomy the term cyto what does it mean it means cell something related to cell that is cyto taxonomy now when i say related to cell what 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 can it be it can be anything related to the number of chromosomes present inside a cell or uh, the way cell division takes place inside a cell so all those things so this is a classification using comparative studies of chromosomes so here we will basically focus on chromosomes when i say chromosomes what do we study about chromosome now the study of chromosome can be about the number of chromosomes that is chromosome numbers or it can be about the structure of chromosome or it can be about the behavior of chromosome how do they behave so it can be anything so when i say number of chromosomes now you will now see that diff different organisms have different number of chromosomes in their cell for example if you consider a human being the number of chromosomes in human beings is 46 whereas if you consider a dog the number of chromosomes in a dog is 78 you compare a monkey the number of chromosomes here is 42 you compare potato the number of chromosomes here is 48 consider a green algae here the number of chromosome is 20 so the number of chromosome varies with different types of organisms now when i talk about the chromosome structure we are talking about the position of the centromere you all remember right what is chromosome what is centromere what was chromosome chromosome was a structure like this and what was centromere the structure which holds it together this structure was centromere so position of the centromere in a chromosome that also varies in different organisms when i talk about the chromosome behavior i am talking about the meiotic behavior or the mitotic behavior because there are different types of cell division that can happen mitosis or meiosis so based on all these things related to chromosomes also we can classify different types of organisms so are you able to see that in this phylogenetic classification we are not only considering the external characters we are also uh, considering the internal characters on top of that we are also considering the composition of the cell we are also considering the i mean on additional to the external and internal characters we are considering all these things so it is definitely going to be a better method of classification the last one is chemo taxonomy chemo that is nothing but related to chemicals so here we will classify things based on chemical composition of plants that means each living organism is made up of some chemicals when we talk about human beings what is this human body everything inside our body is nothing but chemicals we talk of proteins we talk of amino acids carbohydrates what are they they are nothing but chemicals so our body is all made up of that so similarly the body of every organism is made up of chemicals so what do we see we try to study the chemical composition of different plants and based on the different class uh, chemical composition we classify them into different types let us take let us take some example for example lignin and flavonoids are common in all plant groups higher than bryophytes like now it will be like difficult for you to understand this when we'll actually study the different classification of plants the sub classification of plants we will see that in some groups of plants the chemicals called lignin and flavonoids are more common than the other groups of plants so 
This is also one important way by which the organisms are classified. So based on all these things, chemical composition, chromosome behavior and number, um, external characters, internal characters, considering everything together, we get an idea about the evolutionary history of organisms and we are also able to uh, classify organisms in a more efficient way. So this, by using this phylogenetic system of classification, even plants were classified into many different subclasses, into subgroups they have been classified. So in this lesson, we will focus our study on those subdivisions of plants and we will study about each of those groups of plants. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.